So it took us a little bit of effort. Hopefully we created an account wherever we're at. Let's see if we can all get to the same screen here. So let's do this. Whatever your screen shows, let's go back to plus.google.com. Type the, the address plus.google.com again. plus.google.com is the main portal where I can sign in. I've signed in. On the top right corner, it shows I have signed in, literally me, not my business. That's okay, because I then want to check then with everyone that we've gone to plus.google.com, click on your icon on the top right corner. Now, hopefully, then you see the business page that you just created from the list here, and then you want to click your business list name. Because the default is when you go home and you want to do this at home, you're going to go to plus.google.com, which will take you to your personal account. You want to switch over to the business one. And it's simply as, that I just showed you, clicking your icon there and selecting the proper one to manage. So you should then be at the business page. You can confirm that by then seeing the icon there it says Victor's Bakery Google Plus page. If that still says profile, well you're not on the page. You're on the profile. You're on the personal profile. So you should now that you've created at least one be able to switch back and forth. Question? Yes. So mine, when I'm on the, the brand page, uh -huh. my name comes up when I go to my initial page and then when I go to Google Plus um, if you're clicking on the top right corner so it doesn't show your business page there? It does if I'm on business.google.com. It shows my business page and then it shows me as a default, but if I go in reverse and go to Google Plus, then it shows me as a personal initial and click on that, it doesn't show me the page that I just. Did I not like to enter something? Um, I don't know. Uh, and it sounds like some other people have the same. Well, can't answer that unless I see the screen, so I'm going to go to that. And I went out and I came back in. Refresh, refresh.
so the the screen or the anatomy of Google Plus is different than the other networks because all of the different uh, sections are at the left. We saw that on Twitter it had these sections at the top. There was home, notifications, moments, etc. Those were all at the top. On Google Plus it's at the left. That menu, the three-line menu there on the left will open up the different sections. There's a home section, there's all of these other sections like settings and such. If you take a quick look at settings, this is uh, all of these settings about who can manage the, the page and um, what kind of email notifications you want and all of that. So I'm just I'm not going to go through this screen, but I'm just pointing it out to you that you might want to look at your settings at some point to see if everything is set up how you think would work best for you. There's also the part here about help. Remember, uh, I usually have an answer for most of these things, but sometimes when something is very specific, it might be better to get in contact directly with the Google Plus help people. So on the left, we've got these different sections. Uh, home, collections, communities, profile, people, and notifications. Home is where you see your posts and those you follow. So just like Twitter and just about every other social network, there's those concepts of follow and followers. I'm following a company on Twitter. I'm following a company on Google+. Plus. I'm following on Pinterest, whatever. They all have following. My business can follow another business or a person. Uh, on the other side, they can follow me as well. So if I choose to follow 10 accounts on Google+, Plus, I will see their posts. I will see their content on the home screen, just like the home screen on Facebook, just like the home screen of Twitter, or the home screen of all the networks collections, groups of your posts based on topic. Your posts. On Twitter, they would be a tweet. That's the term on Twitter. I, that's my tweet. But it's a post. It's a, it's a share. It's, a, it's content. On Google+, you wouldn't really call it a tweet because you're not on Twitter, but it's a post. It's, it's something you've shared. It's content. That's often the term people use in, in web marketing, content. What's the content you're sharing? Which content includes pictures, links, text, all of that stuff that we'll see how to do. But you can organize your posts into groups, into, not I guess, like folders. You can organize your content into folders. They call it a collection. And look at all of these screens and why they're valuable. Communities. Okay, this is similar to collections. Communities. Uh, groups of people based on a topic. So collections are something that you create. I'm going to create a collection. If I'm Victor's Bakery, I could create a collection for cupcakes, a collection for cookies, a collection for pies, and only put cookie stuff in the cookies collection, and only put pie stuff in the pies collection. So I'm organizing my content into collections. Communities are, as we will see, that I can go to the place where everyone is talking about cookies, where everyone is talking about pies. I can congregate at a place where everyone is talking about a topic. We'll see why that's valuable a little later. But these are one of the two things I really like about Google Plus, that it helps you organize and reach the right audience. The closest thing on Twitter is the hashtag. The hashtag, remember, on Twitter is a keyword that I add to my tweet, so that if someone clicks that keyword or searches that keyword, all the tweets about that keyword show up. So if I create a collection all about a keyword, that's, what, that's how people can find it. Where if I go to a community where everyone's using a keyword, that's how I can get customers. We'll see how to do it, of course. Uh, 
profile your home page. Uh, this is to show your biographical information, your company logo, your phone number, all of that stuff. So this is this goes back to what I said about Twitter. You're not going to get followed. You're not going to entice people to follow you if you're still the generic egg. Everyone that creates an account on Twitter is automatically an egg. You need to change that to your company logo or your your headshot. You need to put in a little biography. You need to put in your information to show you're a legitimate business on Twitter. Google Plus is the same way. If you click on profile, I just created my profile. You probably just created it too. It's my generic initial and a generic Google graphic. I want to somehow figure out a way to change that to put my own information there. So at your own leisure, you will go look at your profile and click edit profile at some point and fill in all that information because that will help you get found but it'll make you look more legitimate I wouldn't follow this page it's as generic as every other spammer but as soon as you fill in your information here with your company product graphic and your company logo or some picture of happy people eating your or using your product you know branding to entice people to follow um, I have to look it up. That's a Google Plus uh, page brand graphic size. The size that we got over from Twitter probably is is uh, the correct size anyway. Now this is from 2013, so it might not be the most current, but this one's saying uh, pretty big, 2120. So um, I don't want to get too off track. So we'll uh, probably can find that over on the help system somewhere. What's the size of my of my Google Plus graphic? They'll tell you there somewhere. But if you probably go with the Twitter size, it should work pretty well. Uh, we've got then the, the people screen. A list of your connections. This is following and followers. Following, of course, is who are you following? What potential customers or competitors are you following? Are you paying attention to? on Google Plus. Just like on Twitter, I want to see what this other bakery is up to, so I'm going to follow them on Twitter. And just like Twitter, yes, they will be notified that you followed them. But you can't follow them on secret. If you follow someone else on any network, they're going to get a notification. They're going to know that you followed them. So what I said was, follow competition, but not direct competition. I'm a bakery, but I'm not going to follow the uh, bakery that is down the street. I want to follow the bakery that's in another state. We're not in direct competition, but I want to see what that bakery is doing. I want to see who their followers are, because that's all public, and a uh, little uh, competitor, you know, competitor analysis. The screen also shows you who has followed you. So remember how valuable followers are. That's your um, captive audience. Whoever has chosen to follow you on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, etc., basically has allowed that you're going to market to them as opposed to that billboard on the on the highway that no one pays attention to unless you really need to here someone has chosen to follow you and every time you post something new on their home screen because everyone sees this basically when whenever they log in on their home screen they will see your latest posts that's the point they want to keep up to date with your company so we'll be able to follow people or businesses, we'll be able to unfollow um, to build an audience. We'll see how and why soon. And lastly, notifications. That one's pretty self-explanatory. This is the screen where you're going to see or check updates. Who has followed you? New comments. Plus ones. On Twitter, 
if someone enjoyed your tweet, what was one of the actions they could have done to your tweet? A like. Perfect. A like. On Facebook, if someone enjoys your post on Facebook, what can they do there? Like, etc. On Google Plus, they can also like. But Google Plus has the terminology of plus one. They've given your post a plus one. They've liked it. Different term for the same thing. So the notification screen will show you John plus one your post. John liked your post. So different terminology, same concept. So Twitter versus Google Plus. On Google Plus, it's a it's a like. I mean, on Twitter, it's a like. On Google Plus, it's a plus one. On um, Twitter, it's a retweet. On Google Plus, it's a share. On uh, Twitter, it's a reply. On Google Plus, it's a reply. On Twitter, it's a tweet. Plus, it's a post. So different names for the same thing. Eventually, when we get over to Facebook, I'll reiterate this, but on Facebook, okay, well, on Facebook, it's got uh, the like as well. The, the, the word like seems to be the most common one, and Facebook was one of the first ones to use it. Um, on Facebook, I think they also call it a share. Uh, you find something cool on Facebook, you share it with more people. Uh, Facebook has also the reply, or do they call it a comment now? But it's a comment. And then uh, your actual, what you share is a post. So not huge amounts of differences between all the networks, um, but they all have the same, these basic same concepts, every network. You get notified. Someone shared your post. Someone replied to your post. Someone plus one your post. You see them all right here. And the purpose again of the notification screen is to keep up to date. So we'll explore all of these in detail right now, but any general questions about these four, these five sections? Six sections? Five sections? Okay, the details will be um, how each of these is, is used most effectively. Um, again, with Google+, Plus, with every network, we have to decide, are we going to share content uh, in the beginning to no one, or are we first going to try to get followers? The problem with trying to get followers first, of course, is you have no content that matters to people. So I'm going to recommend we're going to share content first, then try to get followers, just like Twitter. We'll do the same thing on Facebook. We'll do the same thing on Pinterest. We'll do the same thing on YouTube. All the networks, I believe, you should share something first to entice people to follow you. Let's click on the home screen. You should see this little red pencil everywhere. It may change color, but you should see that pencil everywhere. Uh, you know, I was in uh, people, I guess, profiles. Wherever you're going, you probably should see that pencil, but just to make sure we're all looking at it, go to the home screen. You're going to see this pencil to share, and on the home screen, you're also going to see at the very top, it might say something like, what's new with you? That's your, that's your little share box. So either clicking the pencil or clicking that what's new with you appears. Up here on that what's new with you, you also have a little picture for a photo, although you can add a photo even if you don't click it. If you click the pencil, you can also add a photo. So there's lots of ways to do the same thing, which is to share, to post something. I'm in my business page. I'm going to post something. I'm going to share something. I have no followers, basically, so I'm sharing to no one, but that's okay. I need to build some foundation before trying to get followers. So I'm going to click what's new with you. It shows here Victor's Bakery. If it still has your personal name, you may be in the wrong account, so switch between at the top right corner. But I'm about to share as Victor's Bakery. I'm going to share it public. And the cool thing about, again, Google Plus is you can target your message. 
by default any tweet that you make is public. Everyone can see it. But on Google Plus you can target. Uh, you can have it shared to everyone on Google Plus. Everyone that knows you exist. You can share it to a collection, so a little folder where it's organized. If I go back here, or where did they put it? See more. I can um, share it to communities, circles. There's a lot of little terminology to figure out. We'll talk about circles later. I can share it to specific people. The point is, I can target it to specific people. We don't need to deal with that just yet. This is going to be published public. Everyone can see it. That's what you usually want for a business. If it's your own personal Google+, Plus, of course you want to only let certain people see it. But as a business, I want potentially as many people to find it, to find me, to follow me. So I'm going to say most of the time you're going to share your content public. You have a little menu on the top right corner. Uh, I'll explain what these mean a little later, but they're not so complex to figure out what those mean. A little spot to actually write the text. A spot to attach a photo. So I can click that and upload a photo and such. If I've got up photos already uploaded, I can select them, but I don't have any photos. It's pretty straightforward. Attach a photo. I can attach a link. So if I click this, okay, add your link. So if I've got a link to my website, you know, I can put in the link to my website there. If I have, if I go to my website and copy a link from a specific article, right, if I have a specific link, I can share, I can copy and paste that link, or if you know what your link is, you type it. But I can attach a link. The cool thing about attaching a link is that it will try to create a little uh, preview graphic for you. So this is a picture that it found on that on that page. You can switch graphics there. So if you attach a link, it may try to create a preview, which is nice. Uh, that'll help entice people to to follow the link. A possibility of using this link is, um, let's say I'm writing here, sale today, use coupon code sale123. And then in the link, I would have um, a direct link to the shop. So, some enticement with a direct action. Go to my shop to actually use the coupon. So the link can be very powerful. Yes? Victor, I see there's video. Um, is there vid video editing? No, you have to have a video ready to upload. It doesn't uh, really give you video editing features. YouTube does. That's a topic for another day, but this basically assumes you've got a, a video ready to share. Is there a link to a certain amount of the video you can put on here? I think one video at a time, but the length of the video can be no length, basically. The next item that I can share is a poll. I think these are pretty fun. Uh, you can ask a question. So you can say, What's your favorite type of cookie? And I'll add the poll here and choice of chocolate chip or mint. I can attach a picture there. I can add more choices. So I'm going to attach a poll. Anything that we share here, we always go back to what I said about Twitter, but I'll reiterate here and I'll reiterate for every network. What do you share? Content that is interesting for your current and future followers. 
easier said than done, of course, but the idea is you're creating content that will hopefully get you a reply, or a plus one, or a follow. So you're always trying to get an action out of whatever you post. Uh, everyone's going to vary a little bit. I can't quite say, oh, we share this kind of photo, make sure it's this angle of the photo and make sure it's got this text. That doesn't apply to everyone. And you're going to see plenty of articles out there that will purport to tell you this is what you should share and this is the time of day you should do it. That might apply to a lot of people, but it might not apply to you and your clientele. Maybe that article is telling me, make sure I, I share an inspirational photo every day at 12 noon. My clientele doesn't care about inspirational photos, and they're not up at noon. So, why am I going to follow that article? But someone else may uh, fall into that category. Great. The great thing is, this is all free. So yeah, follow that article and try it, and post at those times and those kinds of photos or links, whatever. Try it. It's all free. It's just, uh, it's just spending your time. Uh, so always think, however, what might be interesting or funny or useful to my current followers or potential followers. Interesting, funny, useful, inspirational. You know, what, what matters to your audience? If I'm a nutritional supplement company, uh, you know, maybe I want to share a photo of one of my products and put a little quote. Um, if I'm selling baked goods, at all times I'm trying to sell baked goods, but I'm not going to be doing the hard sell every time. On any of my networks, I'm not going to be all about sell, 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 buy, buy, buy every time. That turns people off. I don't want to be marketed to all the time. Previously, we had said 80% versus 20%. 80% original content versus 20% repurposed content, someone else's content. We'll also say 80% sa uh, sales content versus 20% uh, community building content, in short, fun content. Uh, something that's not telling you to buy this, or asking you for a donation, or like really leading you to something. It's okay to once in a while just put a funny cat picture, that's it. It's okay to put a really tasty looking photo of a cupcake, and that's it, and not say please buy it. It's okay to just put community building content uh, to get found by a potential follower, or to keep your current followers interested, not just always about hitting you over the head with a sale. Yes? Is there any, is there any that you talk about photos or Yes, the big idea here is about the repurposed content. You can use, there's two answers to that about restrictions. One is, I'm going to recommend you don't rely a lot on other people's pictures. But I'm also going to say, um, for legal purposes, just because I can share someone else's photo doesn't technically mean I have the right to. This, is, this comes into the whole topic of copyrights, which is a bigger topic than I can get into. The short answer is, if you did not create the content, think about not sharing it. And even though it's so easy, to see any one of these uh, pictures and then click the share button all over the internet. The internet seems to be built for sharing, to share this and get viral and send this everywhere. You could get into legal trouble if this photographer is selling this photo and you shared it. Technically, you stole it. And a lot of people don't think about these digital things. Obviously, if you take my cell phone, you stole it. But if you take the photo that I put on my website that I'm selling, but you copied and pasted it into your Twitter, you stole it. And it's, a lot, it's hard for a lot of us to believe that because it's just a photo. It's digital. It's, it's pictures on the screen. It's not real. It is real just because it's not a physical thing. It's intellectual property. So that's why I'm always going to recommend here your own original content as much as possible to avoid the legality. You may never get caught, but if you do, Worst case scenario is someone asks you to take that post down. 
uh, worser case scenario is here's my lawyer to tell you to take it down. Question over here. Well, that's fine. You created it. If you're going to take a photo of a model that looks like that, it's your photo, perfect. If you're going to take the same photo of the same model, well, most likely that's fine too. It's your own original content. Yes? How about if you uh, use like Photoshop or something to make it different? That's a tricky thing that I'm not a lawyer that I can say about because sometimes people say, if you change the photo 10%, you're safe. Uh -huh. That's for, the, that's for the courts to decide. You don't want to get into the courts to decide what's 10%. So if you ever hear about that, well, as long as you change the photo 10%, what does that mean? Changing the color? Changing something in the background? Cropping it? I don't know what 10% is. So again, I'm going to focus on your own original content as much as possible. I might not have a very good camera. I might not know how to take photos. So I'm going to recommend here a website where you can get cool free photos that are okay for you to use pixabay.com yes you can do a google search you can do a yahoo search bing search and type photo of a cupcake and you might get a million results don't use that result you're not you don't know if it's been copyrighted and somehow it ended up online and then you're contributing to stealing it instead if you go to a website focusing on um, royalty free photos or you know copyright free photos this is much better go to a website that focuses on these kinds of photos and yes there's tricks on how to search online but don't even bother with that just go to the place where the photos are good and okay for you to use question Pixabay has some video, but video is often harder to find copyright-free videos because there's so much more work to create. A photo I can easily create and give it out for free on the internet, but a video is more complex, and people don't want to give stuff away for free. And that's fine. That's capitalism. So what I was about to share perhaps was a poll. Maybe it was one of the community-building polls. I'm not saying, which of these would you buy? I'm saying, which of these do you like? Which is more tasty? So I can share a poll. I can share a location. If I share a location, that might ask me to share my location. And that sees that I'm generally in the area of San Diego. The purpose of this is what if I am having some sort of event at a physical location Come on down to our once a year sale. Use coupon code SALE16. And if I attach a location and someone is on their mobile device looking at my Google Plus, they'll have a way to click and then go to the location. Because our devices then can give them turn by turn directions. So this little marker here, this is a little map. You choose your location, and if you've uh, set up your location on Google Plus, your location could show up here. So this is how to further then get people to come to your physical location. You can uh, remove it. I can upload a photo. I can upload many photos. We have, uh, if, if you'd like for practice, I can show you this. Uh, notice if I attach a link, I can no longer attach a photo. If I attach a poll, I can no longer attach a photo. So it's kind of one or the other. But if I uh, instead were to attach a photo, I can then choose to upload a photo. We have a few sample photos for you to use if you'd like. On the left side, under libraries, there's pictures, and then there's sample mm -hmm. pictures. Let's say I might want to upload a picture. I can upload a picture. I can actually upload multiple pictures. It'll automatically create a little album for me. Twitter, I don't recall if we had set it on Twitter, but we can upload up to four pictures on Twitter. On Google+, I don't believe there's a limit. And so I can attach lots of photos right here if I want. I just keep selecting photos and it'll make an album out of all of those photos.
can rearrange them, I can remove them. So the sharing mechanism is pretty robust in that I can attach photos or links. There isn't a button specifically here for video, but if I have a link to a video, if I've uploaded my video to YouTube first, for example, I can attach the link to my YouTube video. We're going to be covering YouTube eventually next month. That takes more effort because I need to have a video. The purpose of YouTube is about videos. Um, I can share a video here. It might not be super obvious, but it's via a link. A link to a video. If this is my very first post on Google+, I might say, uh, welcome to our Google+. The problem with that is it's not adhering to what I said earlier about always think about content that your users would be interested in. That's not interesting. No one knows I exist. What's the point of this? So if I say something like, welcome to our Google+, Plus, follow us for exclusive content and coupons you won't get anywhere else. That's more of an enticement to get followed. Always think in terms about what are your what could your users react to. I'm interested in coupons and I'm interested in exclusive content. That might be a good idea to follow them. So that's a possible post. So whatever you want to share here, if this is a practice account, uh, go ahead then and click post. I'm going to share that. So now I've added something to Google+. If people were searching up at the top, we'll look at search in detail a little bit later, but very much like Twitter, if I was, uh, if someone were searching, they could find my post possibly with some of those keywords I put in there. But I'm sharing something I have no followers, no one really saw it. If they search, they might find it. And as I said, uh, over with Twitter, start off with three to five posts before trying to build followers. Three tweets, five tweets, ten tweets, something to get followed. Three posts on Google+, Plus, five posts, ten, something. Same thing for Pinterest, same thing for Facebook. Try to have some content first to show people, this is what my page is about, this is why you should follow. And you can mix it up. I'm going to put in one plain text post right now. Maybe tomorrow I'll put a picture post. Maybe the next day I'll put in a, a link post. Maybe the next day I'll put a poll post. Maybe I'm finding it so fun. Today at uh, 11, I'm going to post a picture. And then later on today at 2 o'clock, I'm going to post another picture. And then at 10 p.m., I'm going to post a poll. Perfectly fine. You're trying to post content to entice people to follow you. Yes. Yes, at the moment, I have not followed anyone, and yet I'm seeing content. Do you remember on Twitter, one of the first things it asked us was, here are some accounts you might be interested in. And I selected Food Network and the Chargers or whatever, and I started to see stuff. There wasn't any of that that it asked me here. But it's going to show me some somewhat random stuff to then see what I like. And if I start to like a certain bit of content, it might show me more of that content. Based on the name of my business, based on if I filled in my profile and other factors, that's what's showing up here, which may be different to different people. But eventually, as I start to follow accounts, it should really only show me things that I care about of those accounts. If I don't care about music, I'm only going to follow food accounts, therefore it's only going to show me food content. Okay, so we'll start customizing yes, exactly. Can't 
Yeah, but it'll get better. It'll get smarter as you, as you use it more. It'll focus in on relevant content to you. So I wouldn't worry about removing it for the moment because it'll get smarter as, it, as you use it more. One cool thing that I like about uh, Google Plus is there's a little bit of uh, uniqueness to how you can post in that you can do a little bit of uh, a formatting. I can make my text bold. I can make my text italics. I can't do that on Twitter. Uh, I have a variation of that on Facebook, but no one really knows about it yet. Um, on Google+, I can do bold, I can do italics. So here's the secret. There's no button anywhere here to make it bold, but the way you do it is you mark. You mark, this word will be bold. You mark, this sentence will be italics. The way it works is bold text is asterisks. That little, uh, those little stars, shift eight on the keyboard. After I post this, that will become bold. A word or a sentence or a paragraph, I suppose. But just like in the real world, you use these formatting tools judiciously. You don't make your whole paragraph bold in a book. You make that one word bold to stand out. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Well, you're going to write the asterisk wherever you want it to be bold between this asterisk and this asterisk, as soon as I post, that will become bold. Do you have to put the word bold text in front of it? No. I'm saying that bold text is accessed via asterisks. Italic text is underscores. As soon as I post this, the word underscores will become italicized. The word asterisks will become bold. And there's one more that's not that useful, but you might figure out a use for it. Strike through text is dashes. So just to show you, I'm going to post this. This is obviously not a good post, but just to show you, I'm going to post it. And what that does is bold, italics, strike through. Can you go back and... <laughs> to one moment. So the asterisk becomes then bold, and the italics becomes under, or the underscore become italics. And if I use dashes, that becomes strike through. <clears throat> so a more tangible way to do this, I'm going to say, sale this Saturday, use coupon code, sale one, two, three. So I would, I want bold. This Saturday. So I put asterisks around what I want to become bold. And then I make the coupon stand out with underscores, which will become italics when I post. Those symbols then convert into bold or italics when I post. Oh, strike through was a dash. Uh, so, I, so I can say, for example, uh, sorry for last week. And I can put here dash, dash, and that'll be crossed out. So again, the strike through, there's not a lot of purpose to it, I think, but you might be able to figure it out. This is most common, like, let's say there's some sort of contract or something. The contract stipulated something, and then something's been changed, so we need to cross out the old text for new text. For us here on Google+, Plus, I don't really hardly ever use this for a client, but we use the bold and italics all the time. It stands out, because if you look at other people's posts, you know, plain text, plain text, plain text, this guy put bold here, grabs popcorn until the next SE event. That stood out. I see a whole paragraph here, but this stood out to me plain text, plain text. Not too many people know that trick because it is pretty secret. You wouldn't have known it unless you looked it up somewhere or someone tells it to you. But you can judiciously bold things and italicize things. Don't italicize your whole paragraph. The point of emphasis is emphasis. When you overuse emphasis, you've lost the emphasis. And yes, I think you can do bold and italics at once, but don't do that either. Um, you know, overemphasis is annoying.
So I can add a, a photo and to the little description of the photo, I can also add text and italicize and such. So our goal is to share a few things to show people why they might want to follow us. This obviously just for this purpose, this is not this is not um, legitimate, <coughs> legitimate content. So anything that I share, that I share, if I click on its, its time stamp there, I posted this a second ago, the other thing I did over here was a little bit later, if I click on the corner where the time is of my post or someone else's post, but if I click on the time of my post right there, you know, it focuses on my particular post um, where I can see some of these stats. I can press back. If I uh, click on an empty spot of my post, you see a little three-dot menu appears. Each one of my posts has options. If I click on an empty spot of my post, I get options. If I click on someone else's post, um, you know, on an empty spot, I get options, that little menu. Uh, here's the funny thing. Uh, there's a technical name for this line menu, and there's a technical name for this dot menu. Uh, in computer circles, people have given these funny names. They call this the hamburger menu, because it looks like bread and meat in the middle. It's a little hamburger menu. This one has also a funny food-related name. This is the kebab menu. <laughs> it's items in a kebab skewer. So the three dots menu, the kebab menu, or the hamburger menu, the three lines menu. I think there's another one with some other food item. Uh, but the three dots menu, the point is if you click on your own post and you open your menu, you have these options such as, I shouldn't have shared that. So you can delete your post. If you delete it, it's gone. I believe it does give you a quick undo at that moment. <clears throat> I guess not. Oh well. So it's gone. And um, if I made a mistake, and if I misspelled something, unlike a tweet, which you cannot go back and edit, once you share that tweet, it's there, or you can't go back and edit it, or you have to delete the tweet and write it again, check your spelling, and then post it. There's no edit feature on Twitter. And oftentimes beginners hate that. Beginners want the, the tweet editing ability. Twitter's been around 10 years, and those of us that perhaps have used it a while know that limitation and live with that limitation, and we're fine with it. Probably Twitter is going to change it to let us edit it. I personally don't want them to, because I think it loses a character of Twitter. Not editing your tweets is part of Twitter. It kind of maybe helps you think more about what are you doing. But because they are a publicly traded company and they are beholden to their investors, maybe they'll change that. I hope they don't. Google Plus does let you, from the beginning, edit your post. Whoops, I made a mistake there. I don't look professional. Anywhere is misspelled. I didn't catch it the first time. So if I click on my menu, I can edit my post that and it lets me edit it. It's a little limiting, however, it will not let you replace a photo. It will not let you re-edit your poll to put different options. So any of those attachments that you add to your post, those are set. But whatever text description you add to the post, that can be edited. Question? When you're editing, editing this, if somebody wants to go on your site, they can't get it to it they will be able to see everything, even the post you're editing, they just won't see that one post you're editing. So all of this is public by default, and they will be able to see everything. As soon as you save it, and they come back to it, it'll be the new version. Other options here. Delete, edit, post, disable comments, disable reshares, move to collection, mute. So let's make some notes about the actions of your posts.
post actions. Delete is obvious what that does. Uh, edit post, that's obvious as well. Uh, disable comments. By default, everyone can write a comment on what you've written. Um, it's, uh, it's comments or replies. On Twitter, it's a reply, but it's, it's a comment. On here, it's a comment, it's a reply. It's a way for people to be in on a conversation. You, you shared something, a really tasty photo, of a cupcake and you want then your followers or strangers to comment on it. That helps us figure out this is a perhaps a more serious uh, follower. I can target them a little better. Um, the problem of course is because it's public anyone can comment. Therefore any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your post. So you have the ability to to moderate your content. If someone comments, you will have a button that says delete comment. You will be able to delete their, com to delete their comment. But if you're, uh, if your uh, post is so controversial that lots and lots and lots of people are commenting negatively to, you, to that post, perhaps you can go to disable the comment and then no one will be able to write anything. You can turn it on or off. Uh, I don't believe it deletes comments that have existed, but it hides them and no more comments can be added. They can re-enable the comment and whatever was there should come back. So this disable comments, turn off, okay, per post, turn off comment ability, reply ability, the ability for people to comment. The big purpose of that uh, is one of the reasons, that, again, why uh, Google Plus is, is very cool. And last week, I said Twitter was my second favorite social network. Google Plus is my first number one favorite social network for personal and business. Uh, because you can really find your, your target audience and, and control your message. Because if you put out a tweet out there, you can't edit anyone else's tweets. You can't control anyone else's tweets. That's the good and the bad of Twitter. It's very, very public. Google Plus is public, but you can at least control your message. If people write negative things on your posts, click delete, it's gone. Keep it on topic. If you don't want any comments because it's, for whatever reason, you don't want to deal with people's comments, just disable the ability to comment. You can shape your message. Uh, one is not better than the other, but let me say here, decide on decide for social media either monologue, dialogue. Decide to use to use social media as either a monologue or a dialogue. You can tell me what's a monologue. What's the keyword mono? one. So single-sided conversation. Okay, what's a dialogue? Many-sided, multiple-sided conversation. So you're going to need to decide. Do you want to use your social media as a monologue or as a dialogue? And in social media, the monologue is that I'm using Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, and I'm posting stuff and I never engage with my audience. I just post and I post and look at this and look at that and we're good and we're great. But you never reply to your, to your followers. You never say thank you to them. You never build a conversation in a community. You're never social on a social network. And so the monologue works. McDonald's is not replying to all of their customers. Okay. Um, the big companies usually Celebrities are not replying oftentimes to their fans. There's just too many to reply to. Um, many other companies, however, engage in the dialogue. Taco Bell, you know, here's the funny one. The dictionary, Miriam Webster, they're always talking with, with people on social media, uh, usually, you know, explaining 
the meaning of words and such to people. Uh, but they're they're using a very old classic entity. You know, Merriam-Webster dictionaries is like 150 years old, and they're on social media and they're using it like a teenager. They're connecting with people and they're being very active and very social, and it's working for them. They've got thousands of followers following the dictionary, <laughs> <laughs> hundreds of thousands, because it's interesting. What's that? Very good question. What is best? You're going to need to decide yourself. This one's more work because you're going to post something. If someone replies, you should reply to them, positive or negatively. Um, this one is less work. You're going to post something and then post something new tomorrow and don't worry about the, the replies and the people. But I'm going to recommend, it's not always right, but I'm going to recommend the dialogue. Use the social media platform to be social, to build an audience, to interact with them, to make them feel you're not just a nameless corporation, you're actually selling a nice product that I want to buy and get, get to know you. Think of all of these companies that are very, you know, personable. Uh, you visit, uh, you know, your local mom and pop shop and they're going to give you much more customer service than Walmart or Target or, you know, the big companies. Uh, all the friendly people uh, at Whole Foods compared to, uh, you know, Albertsons, not to put Albertsons down, but oftentimes, you know, the people that go to a certain company like to go to that company because of the way the environment is and what they sell and the people behind it. So it's a bit more dialogue than monologue. It doesn't matter if you never go back to Walmart. A million other people, a million other people will. But it does matter if you don't go back to that mom and pop shop. That small clientele is very valuable to them, so they will nurture it. I recommend the, the dialogue, which is more work, but it could pay off more in the end. So then disabling comments on your post may be too much of the nuclear option. You have no feedback from your customers. Related to the monologue and the dialogue is the reshare. By default, because I've shared something and it's public, someone else um, can share it to more people. Do you see below other people's posts you have the actions of plus one? If you like that, that post, you can plus one it. If you uh, are interested in some content and want to put your two cents in, there's the button right there to comment. Great video. I learned a lot. <laughs> I then uh, see other content, and if I think, um, whenever I think it's so uh, valuable, I can uh, then do the next uh, interaction, which is the the share. Notice this one. This one has worked for people. You know, cute kids always work. So this has got 47 plus ones. This has got five comments and four shares. Remember on Twitter, we had the number of likes, the number of retweets. We didn't have a number of comments or replies, but uh, I, I hope they fix that. Here in Google Plus, we see these stats. You know, this one doesn't have any interactions just yet. Neither, oh, this one has got five plus ones. Five plus ones. You know, some of this content has got some shares. So if I like a con, a post a lot as well, I can do this next interaction, which is the share. I click that. What I'm about to do is okay. Do I want to share this over to my Twitter, Facebook? Copy the link, share it on Google Plus. So basically, that's gonna that's that twenty percent. I'm copying someone else's content to share it to spread it to more people. 80%, 20%. This is okay to do. If they don't want you to share their content, they have the ability to turn that off. Just like I'm showing you on our post. Just like I'm showing you on my post. In the button there at the top right, disable shares.
on my own post, I have the option there, disable reshares. No, I don't want other people to copy my post and, and share it. That is another part of shooting yourself in the foot of social media. If you turn that off, how are you going to go viral? How are you going to have other people reach your post and see it and someone else shares it and someone else and someone else and someone else and then you get famous and make sales? So if you disable that reshare ability, that might not be so good. You can turn it on and off easily. You cannot do that on Twitter. If someone sees your tweet, they can share it and it's, it's out there to the world, unless you put your account private. But that again goes against the publicness and the dialogue of social media. You know, I, it's not really, I, I don't want to say it as blaming the victim, but if you don't want your content to be shared online, don't put your content online. And then there is a huge, of course, spectrum of that topic that I don't want to get into. But if your business stuff, of course, put all your business stuff online, get it found by people, get it shared, and all of that. Your personal is another matter, and it's perfectly fine to have it all perfectly private and locked down. It's all right. But for businesses, try to be as public as possible for your business. You want to get potential followers. You want to get followers. Followers could lead to sales. That's the whole point of you being online on social media, I hope, to get something for it. Yes? Is, there, is it wrong or, or not to get um, business etiquette to, I mean, there's like all these platforms. Mm -hmm. And if I post similar content on my business, I'm having different followers on these platforms. Is it okay to post multiple? We, uh, we did mention that last week, but to reiterate, it's okay to post the same thing on all networks. Okay. The problem is, if I'm following you on Twitter, then there's less enticement for you to follow on Google+, because it's the same thing. The middle ground that I said last week was, use the same photo, but maybe a different description. In the spot here to write a description, write something else about it. So it is a lot more work to share different things to different networks. And as beginners, it's okay to share the same thing. I guess you're just figuring how many people are really focusing on all of not that many. Yeah. Exactly. The purpose someone is on Twitter is because they don't want Facebook. Right. The person someone's on Facebook is that they don't know any better. No, I mean that, <laughs> that they uh, that they don't want to be on the other that they don't want to be on the other networks. The reason someone's on Google Plus is that you know they don't want to be on the other network. So to entice one to go to another is going to be hard. So share content that's original and interesting for each platform, and hopefully then you get clientele. Move to move post to collection. This is to organize your posts into groups, folders. We'll look at that in detail in a moment. Uh, but this is move post to collection. Move post to collection. This is organize your posts into topics. We'll see the pros and cons of that a little bit later. Uh, one of the big pros is organization, findability, the ability for your stuff to be found. This, this is running 24 hours a day. Twitter's running all day long. Facebook's running all day long, all over the world. Uh, so content is constantly being shared. And we're seeing here on the home screen, I see some stuff and I'm going and going and going. It's never going to end. I'm going to keep seeing content. People are sharing all the time. And especially as you're following accounts, uh, it's just endless content. A way for people to go back to your content. What was that thing that Victor's Bakery posted? I can't find it. I'm scrolling and scrolling. Well, if you organize it into collections, people will be able to find your content a lot easier. There's a screen devoted to that organization. We'll look at it in detail soon. But that's a possibility of why we want to use collections organization. On the last item is mute. This works more on other people's posts. This one here, um, this post here, original came from Rohan Blake. And so that one seemed to have worked pretty well uh, for Rohan. Uh, 49 likes there and all of this other content. So if I were to decide to contribute to the conversation here at Cute Kid and posted that, when I post to, when I reply or comment to someone's 
post, everyone in the chain gets a notification. Victor's Bakery replied to Rohan. So Rashad got the notification, Marcus got the notification, everyone in the chain gets a notification that says I'm part of the conversation now. Conversation, uh, notifications show up in notification screen here or on the little bell at the top right corner. Once you start getting notifications, a number will appear up there. So we will see in a bit that this is very useful because again, no one knows I exist. So if I get in on conversations, the harsh way to say it is if I butt in on someone's conversation, but the social media marketing is if I engage in someone's conversation, if I, if I get in on someone's conversation that's popular, all of the people will know I exist, at least. Worst case scenario, they move on with their day and nothing happens. Best case scenario, someone follows me because they know I exist, because I have content on my profile, because I'm active. But if I see one of these posts with a lot of activity, one tactic to get followers is to join the conversation. And so, if I join in on this conversation with all of these people commenting here, I'll be a part of it. They will, they will get notifications. The reason you might want to mute, turn off notification per post, turn off notifications for that post. I happen to have commented on a post that had 50 people commenting on it. Well, I'm going to get a lot of notifications about the activity on that one post. I no longer want to receive those notifications. I can mute that post, their post, or my post. I don't really see at all much of a point to muting your own posts because then you won't know what's happening with your own content. Okay, so uh, we'll take one more break. When we come back, we'll look at then the big secret weapons of Google+, which are communities and collections. Uh, we're going to do it slightly shorter time because we're running close to the end of the day. We'll have a break until 12.15, so less than 10 minutes. We'll be back at 12.15, and then we can proceed.